Well, let me do a quick introduction, as I mentioned in our last class period. Um, we have a wonderful guest speaker today. <laughs> this is Sean Modest. This is Mark Summers. He is from CSRA and Application Development Manager. Is that your role there? So um, he has agreed to come talk to us because we're introducing the subject of normalization today. And so he's going to give you some examples of real world um, scenarios where he has. Uh, yeah, yeah, encountered it. So feel free to ask questions. Um, and I'm going to open the floor to you. Thank okay. you for coming. Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. Hello. Um, this is class participation time. So I know we just ate lunch. And everybody, but, um, so, is this your first database class? Yes. yes. Yeah. So, we all know how to spell it now. How much further have we gotten besides spelling it? What have y'all done? You can talk, it's okay. Access, tables, queries. Tables, queries. ERD diagrams. ERD diagrams, all right, cool. Yeah, we like to paste those on the walls and wallpaper our offices with them and stuff like that. So, yeah, especially you get the big ones, um, they can take up a lot of wall space. So. Cool. Well, let me introduce a little, a little bit about me. My name is Mark Summers. I'm, like she said, from CSRA up in Bossier City, Louisiana. We've been there for a couple of years now, but we just are starting to move into our new building. So you might see us on the news or something. There, there's a lot of hype over us moving into our new cool building because it's cool and um, very. I wouldn't say necessarily like Google-ish or Facebook-ish, but it's it's modern, you know, and it's, it's um, kind of geared toward people your age instead of my age. I was used to the old cubes where we didn't look at anybody and have talked to anybody, and now it's more open, and you can talk to people and all that stuff. We've got what we call the living room where it's just all kinds of funky IKEA-looking IKEA furniture and all kinds of stuff. So. It's a cool place. So sometime you're up there, pay us a visit. I've um, got a few of your students working in my group. I'm, um, I'm up to three. I have about 50 people, and I'm up to three from Northwestern, I believe, at the moment. So um, Quentin Hilaire is how he says his last name. Just came up recently, did track here and stuff from the CIS department. So uh, anyway. So cool. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Georgia, well, Tennessee originally, and then Georgia. Worked for a big company called McKesson. You probably never heard of them, but um, they're the largest pharmaceutical supplier in the country. So they supply hospitals with supplies. They also supply drugs to hospitals and stuff like that. They do all kinds of software, all kinds. Um, they're a Fortune 5 company. So um, they're big, and I worked on two systems for them. I worked on a claims processing system. So when you go to the doctor and they say, well, we'll file your claim, come on in. They, they say, we'll file your claim. That claim, if they were using our software, would come in, get scanned in, put into our system, and what's called adjudicated. So that's a fancy legal term for just basically, what are we going to pay? Maybe nothing, maybe something, whatever, but we go through all the rigmarole and we print out a nice EOB and send to you and those things you get from the doctor that you can't read, saying here's what we paid. It, <clears throat> we, we do that kind of stuff. So that's one system. Database on that one was in Sybase when I started there. Um, Sybase, a little history, was, uh, um, they've been around quite a while. They were Unix-based at first. Um, them and Microsoft actually partnered in the 90s, and Microsoft SQL Server is built on top of Sybase's database engine. Now, since then, SQL Server has just gone, you know, off on their own. The partnership didn't last long. It was kind of a weird partnership anyway, but um, they did get Sybase's database engine out of it. So. SQL Server and Sybase are very similar. If you ever get to use Sybase and you've used SQL Server, you'll notice, hey, this looks about the same, because it is. Um, so I worked on Sybase. Um, Sybase also had a Windows version, worked on that. Um, 
Then I moved to a, well, they spun off our group, went to a different claims processing system on top of, um, on top of SQL Server 2000 way back then, which was probably the first really production-worthy SQL Server version. Before that, it was kind of rough. Um, Sybase, Oracle, and DB2 were your main databases back in the early 90s, well in the 90s, but then um, SQL Server 2000 was pretty decent. We could use it for production worthy stuff. And what you have to think about in production is, you know, will it stay up and run and, you know, does it crash on us and we can back it up and we can restore and do all the things that we have to do with databases. So that was a worthy one. Then I moved back over to the pharmacy product, which was if you're at the hospital and get drugs, there's a pharmacy usually located down in the basement. Hmm. They have no windows. They only have one way in and out because they've got narcotics and all kinds of stuff down there. And actually um, nuclear stuff because nuclear medicine, they've got isotopes and stuff, so it's highly restricted space. But we made a pharmacy application for hospitals. So I would tell people, what do you do for a living? I do drugs. Yeah, that's what I do. So um, I peddle drugs. So um, did an application for them. It was on Oracle. Um, we were at 10G and 11G. And the G and Oracle, if you know anything about Oracle, if you don't, Oracle's a big database platform. Oracle and DB2 usually go head to head for how much market share they have. Um, but the G stood for grid, so you could throw more servers at a problem and carry your load that way. This was kind of before the cloud had come into being and was useful, so um, it, was a, it was a nice way to take a big database system and when you start having performance problems, you just threw another Linux server at it and it shared the load, so um, it was pretty cool technology, howbeit, Oracle is very, um, probably one of the tougher ones to administer as a DBA. So uh, it, it takes a lot. It, there's a dark science, one of those dark sciences to Oracle. And you have to get in a room with candles and stuff, and dolls and pins and all that stuff. It's just, it's, it's crazy what you have to do with Oracle. But um, it's, it's, Oracle DBAs make good money because they have to. They, you have to know some stuff. So um, let's see what else we do. And then after that, I pretty much got out of the database world per se and went more into the middle tier and front end development. Did um, a lot of stuff in that. Um, so that's that's a little bit about me. So I've been doing databases for 20 years now. They haven't changed much. Well. Mm -hmm. Relational databases like you're learning right now haven't changed much. What has changed is now we've got new databases called um, NoSQL databases or graph-based databases. Um, it's where the data is no longer relational. So you understand what a relational database is? I'll nod or I'll go, uh, uh. Please nod. Please nod. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so relational database, like, okay, in the real world, we don't really admit that access is a database, but it is in a little way. It's, it, access is actually the first database I worked with. It's very, very cool for just quick little stuff. You've got a department that needs some help doing something. I still, I have an access database at work that I keep up with all my people, just because it's easy. It's got built-in reporting tools and all this stuff, so it's really easy. Um, but you've got tables that have columns and rows. That's relations. And a table's related to another table. When we're designing, we talk about entity relationships, and you said the ERDs, an entity relationship diagram. So um, the person's related to an address somehow, or the person's related to a class. You know, so stuff like that. If they're student, you know, students related to a class, and uh, professors related to a class, and so by by the inference of the class, the students related to the professor, and you know, those are relationships. So those are relational databases. 
for instance, the Oracles, DB2s, the SQL servers, MySQL, now MySQL is forked to MariaDB, um, all those different databases are relational databases. Then there's the NoSQL things that some of them are like cache databases. If you understand cache in the web world where we're caching data, they're key value pair type things where we just throw a bunch of data that we're going to need and we don't have to worry about, you know, querying them for, with SQL and stuff like that. It's just, hey, I want to go look up some key and get a value out of it. So that's some of the newer types of databases that are out there. And some people just don't care about some of the things that we care about in relational databases. Like, have y'all talked about ACID? Mm -mm. No? Okay. Do y'all cover ACID in this? I don't no? Think so. Okay. So y'all don't get to do ACID. That's good. Sorry. That's not good for you. <laughs> um, ACID is just a term of, it talks about what a relational database has to be able to do. And the transactions have to be atomic, consistent, blah, 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 blah. Um, the NoSQL databases don't necessarily follow the ACID rule. They follow what's called a base rule, usually. And so they're the data doesn't have to be consistent right away. So if you think about Facebook, they got a gazillion servers around the world running. You put a, a post on there, somebody in China doesn't have to see that post within a few seconds of you putting it on there. It could take a little while till it makes it over to their servers and stuff. And that's kind of the idea of eventually the data is consistent across the system can lag around. In, in transactional databases, we usually don't like to do that because they're transactional databases. For instance, when you go to the ATM, do you want it to know that your paycheck got in there or not? Man, usually because I want to get some money out of it, you know? So, you know, transactional databases like SQL Server, Access, and those follow this ACID rule. So they're very, there's rules they have to follow. Anybody that makes one of those databases, the database system has to follow some certain rules. So let's talk about normalization. Do you all know what normalization is at all? 